Welcome to the Weekender. I'm joined by Lloyd and Justin hey, uh, this fine Saturday morning. Oh boy, has Long this week. been a week in Long gaming. Week. It's, uh, they talk it's about been a some... week in gaming from a franchise point of view, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, to lead off this morning, I want, there, there's only one piece of news that we're going to talk about. Yeah, it, it has to be Halo. Wait, yeah. let me just stop you there while I go, Wee! and then I'll go all calm again. Halo coming to the tabletop. Again. Again? Yeah, well, you could have got that hero click stuff. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, HeroClix, uh, HeroClix did it first. Um, Spartan Games have announced that they have licensed Halo from Microsoft. And uh, they have, um, from what I can gather, a number of games uh, based in the Halo universe um, on uh, the cards. In the plan. Yeah. Um, the, to kick off, though, they're developing a space battle game. Okay, spaceship based game uh, that is first featuring the Covenant and the UNSC. Mm -hmm. um, later on, they'll they'll be going to ground battles and stuff like that. Well, so, well, well, let me jump in there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get a let's get an image up, okay? All right. So, who have we got? The the humans are so yeah. The UNSC. This is their battle group. Yeah. Now, one of the comments I'd seen on, on the internet was, "Oh, but there's only two factions that can fight." Yeah. That didn't stop you enjoying X Wing, did it? True. Yeah, that's very true. And it's that not very true. it's not totally limited to that. For example, here we have <clears throat> Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. What I was gonna say was whenever it is um just uh, two factions, uh, for example, it does give you the scope to build much, much bigger fleets and have much, much bigger games. Yeah, you can have multiple players on each side all affecting the yeah. one battle. Yeah, well, you could do that anyway, but I, I'm not too concerned these days. You know, a, a, a year or two back, I was uh, I would have thought, oh, a war game has to have multiple factions for it to be any good. No, I don't. I don't think like that at all. You know, I, I think that um, X Wing proved it. You know, I'm with you, you on this. You can have two factions, and, and it, it 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 can have a fantastic start, so long as the game is good, mm -hmm. so long as the models are good. Yep, I'm with you on this because um, if you look here at this picture, I think it'd be really awesome to see a huge fleet. Yeah. Of these ships. Yeah. Now let's let's also bring let's get some close ups of those actually. So here we're getting some close ups. These have a real cool the thing about their ships in Halo with the UN UNSC is mm. they've got that kind of um similar look that, that was in um oh what was it? Starship Troopers. Uh, yes. But yeah. that really heavy I'm a brute force ship. Yes. Which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Let's get the big one up. I was gonna say it's almost like a Battlestar Galactica type feel, you know, it's very utilitarian. It's it's just yeah. Humanity seriously... has hit space, started exploring. Yeah, but we're not that advanced to be the super race out there. It's... Yeah, but we're a no nonsense sort of race. Yeah, yeah. It's re that up armor feel to it, I think, mm. is is really good. I mean, this big ship. I love all the gribbly stuff, and I like the shape of this ship as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, um, it'll be interesting to see where they go with these. Um, a little bird tells me that uh, Spartan and Mi Microsoft have actually been working together to design new stuff that hasn't actually been in the Halo franchise to date. So that uh, So hang on, they're they're getting to add canon via the war game. Uh, I little bird That may does have, sound good. Little bird may have told me that. That's well, nice. How cool is that to have a miniatures company that has the experience of Spartan behind them mm -hmm. being able to start to feed back uh, uh, into, into the actual franchise that actually end up coming from miniatures going back into the video game industry. Yeah. They're not yeah, that sort cool. of ships though as well. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's... Do we have any of the, the, the kind of artwork of the, the ships that, that, that these things are based on, Lloyd? Or... Well, we have, the, we have this picture. I don't know if this is an official picture. Yeah. This just popped up on the internet when we were doing a search and just oh, looked, look at that. looked at it and went, oh my god, oh, that's yeah. amazing looking. Do you want? The Spirit yeah. of Fire. I don't know if that's in the games or not. I've played, I recently played through the entire Master Chief collection. I, didn't, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen that. So. This probably come off like you were maybe on it. And maybe, you didn't maybe, know. maybe, maybe, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> maybe I, I, I was, I was on set it. to hunt down images for this, so I stuck in Halo spaceships into Google to see what could yeah. come up, and that was the coolest one I found. I don't know if it's official, but it's beautiful. Let's move yeah. on and let's see. Here's some sort of Covenant, Covenant ships. Mm. Yeah, no, the okay. Covenant. Do you know it's just all coming back to me? I remember the first time I played Halo. You, you're going to take the my Master Chief collection. I finished it. I'm going to yeah. give it to you now because the Halo Five beta is over, so you can take it and play through it and get the grips with this story. Oh, because it's just the story so cool. is mammoth. Yeah. If I tried to explain it to you, it'd be all show. 
Yeah, I know. Well, they're like, I am the PlayStation player, but I did own a 360 once. Maybe, maybe it we'll, was the Halo special maybe we'll do a Halo special where oh. we get Lloyd to wax lyrical on Halo <laughs> and we can, you know, we can start to see it, bring screenshots up, mm. bring us all up to speed. Well, I have quite a lot here for us to get through as, well, as well, it is. We'll fire on then. Let's so this actually is look. Yep, here's the actual Covenant Battle Fleet. Yeah, very fleet cool. Of, oh, what is it? Valiant Prudence? The Valiant Prudence. Yeah, the yeah. fleet of Valiant Prudence. Yeah, mm. heavy cruiser, battle cruiser, and heavy corvette. The cool thing about this is when you're playing the games, like to see that heavy Corvette. Yeah, you get you can see them in the game overhead and stuff. I hope Spartan makes this stuff big. Mm. I know they're capable of making some big ass models. Mm -hmm. The only interesting thing is, I don't think they'll make it big. I plastics. Think, I think it. I think it'll be the same scale as we're looking at for Firestorm Armada. Oh, mm. But but I want the big ships to be. Yeah, about the, yawn the, length. The, the, let's get, I think the big go. ships in Firestorm Armada though are quite let's big. Get a bit yeah, closer. but that's what I'm saying. I want them. I want them to be. Well, I want probably, them to be this big, like not I, this like big. iPad size. Yes, yes. I want Fair the big enough. ships to be that big. Mm. I want to feel the the metal of it all. And it may have went over your heads. It's all in plastic. Is it all in plastic? What, if, uh, from from what I have Spartan, can gather, have you been cheeky? Uh, from what I can gather, it's all plastic. So. <laughs> which so, which so is... suddenly Lloyd's sitting there going, "No resin dust, no resin dust, plastic." Woo! This takes two good two good two good boxes for me, right? Recently, we've talked about franchises a lot and how mm -hmm. you can. Uh, yeah, they're just flooding in now. You, yeah. you no, know, but how you can jump in mm. because you know the story. Yes. Yeah. Now, Firestorm Armada looks like a great game, but I've never taken the plunge. Yeah, I this, actually have a lot of other life. I'm Fleet taking the plunge on yes. because I look at it and go, I know what's going on, mm -hmm. at least roughly, mm. having played through the games. I'm jumping headlong into that. Yeah. Because I recognize the ships. I yeah. recognize the big gribbly guys. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other ships? Oh, I've got a diagram here to give you some sense of scale. Okay, so hang on. Along the top, you're seeing the Empire State Building. Yes. Holy what the hell? Moly. The smallest ship down the very bottom there is about twice the size of the Empire State Building, there, thereabouts. Yeah, they're huge. So you've got the UNC Infinity at the top. Mm -hmm. um, that is in the game. The Assault Carrier for the Covenant, the Spirit of Fire, there it is there, Lloyd. Um, and the Pillar of Autumn. Jeepers, that is serious. Pillar of Autumn's in the game. That gets crashed onto a Halo ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is serious, and that's the other serious thing. ships. Like. I want them to make Halo rings. Yeah. At least oh. sections of Halo Rings. Yes, because mm -hmm. that would be... Imagine if they could do like a resin... Uh, you know, probably, it might even be plastic. You could do a section of a Halo Ring. I wonder how big that would need to be to even be in scale mm. with the likes Very of Very big, you know. hence why I said a section of it if you yeah. want to keep it in scale. What you could do is, the Halo Rings tend to get blown up quite a lot in Halo, yeah. is have a chunk of Halo Ring. Like mm. in their latest TV show. They're going off, they're, they're landing on a chunk of a halo ring yeah. that's left over. I don't think I've seen that one yet. The fact that it's in plastic is, is a really good thing. You know, plastics yeah. is a great, uh, a great innovation in the industry, and I think that this could go mainstream. I, I think that if Spartan get this right, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever that we couldn't be seeing this in toy shops. Yeah, um, and water stones and stuff like that. You yeah. know, and, and it'll be proper hobby as well, because I don't believe that this stuff's going to come... Uh, Pre-print. It's not pre-paint. It's not that X-Wing's not proper hobby, but I don't believe they'll go the pre-paint route on this. Mm -hmm. I believe it will be clipped and stick together. Yeah. I will, however, be ruining the loss of it in resin because I just have come to love resin as a material. I love the weightiness of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the fact that it, it feels solid, and you know, you're clunking your your ships and stuff around. But I clunking, like Warren, clunking. You drop models, if you drop a resin model, it's got a good chance of snapping. Uh, yeah, drop plastic, hopefully yeah. it'll bounce. I've seen Warren <laughs> drop metal minis and they just go into every component piece they began in. Right. Uh, I'm just looking for sh other ships here to see if we have mm. any. Well, while he's looking for that, it, it, this is just the start from what we can gather from, Scarpin, uh, from Spartan. It, it's then going to move on to uh, ground warfare, mm -hmm. okay? Um, now, Lloyd, you... Can you give me some examples of the kind of stuff we might see if it if it went ground warfare? Because I see some debate on the website about oh twenty eight mil, no, make it fifteen mil. Mm. You know, it's um, I can understand what's happening. Happening, the twenty eight mil guys just want to see awesome stuff at twenty eight mil that they can then 
um, maybe even using other games and repurpose and stuff like mm. that. The 15 mil guys... I want the big epic battle. You guys are after my heart. Flames of War demonstrated this to me. Um, I've played Halo at 28 mil. It's called the video game. Mm. Do you know I've what seen, I mean? I've that, seen, uh, I've seen the someone say game. something like that, yeah. Yeah, I've played that skirmish game. I want to play Halo mass battle. Um, so I would love to see Halo at 15 mil with my Warthogs. Well, if you want an idea of what that's like, go and play Halo Wars. Yeah. That's essentially it. Mm. If, if, they're going, if they're going to be bringing out ground-based games and they want to go mass battle, yeah. Halo Wars is what they're basically replicating on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to have units like, well, we start with the UN, UNSC. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. We'll, we'll go for, well, everyone knows. Your there Warthog. We go. Warthog. Warthog. Yep. <laughs> it's epic that yeah. It's iconic. The oh, Warthog yeah. is iconic. I remember in the, the first Halo mm. zipping around in, in multiplayer mode, me and you playing over Xbox Live, and just we'd cleared the map, but mm. we just spent the rest of the time zipping around in a I Warthog. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, they actually built a real one of these for the movie, the live action movie, Halo yeah. Forward Onto Dawn. Mm -hmm. Which was very I've cool. tried watching that a couple of times. <laughs> I got fold, through it. I, I really enjoyed it. I, got, I can't watch Ford on the Dawn either. <laughs> I liked it. What else, Floyd, though? It, it, gets, it gets bigger, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, let's go back to scale, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want a Warthog to be in scale without fudging it too much... Mm. Yeah, so a Warthog, if you had your 15 mil guy, your Warthog's going to be kind of like the size, but slightly bigger and slightly Swap. chunkier than... Inch and a half by inch square. Yeah, than your Flames of War Jeep. Type thing. So fifteen mil, you think? Yeah, if you went fifteen mil, it would be be about that size. Mm. Yeah, because there is this thing here that the UNSC have. It's yeah. called a mammoth. So, so now this appears. What's that? About, about twice the size. Oh yeah, about, about twice the size. This appears in Halo Four. Yeah. Right, you're riding around on this, but you can drive out of it. Okay, it's not <laughs> twice the size. In a now, warthog. One of their wheels is bigger than a warthog. Yeah, that. Yeah. Inside there, there's two the, warthogs. The wheel would be twice the size of the warthog. So you're so looking you're about looking something about yeah about eight inches or so yeah, yeah something about eight by four holy moly so Huge. They, if they may have to go slightly smaller if they want to well keep you're not it. going to do that thing in twenty eight mil are you no. unless they're going and saying ten we want a big centerpiece have fun but I don't yeah. want them to go so small that the vehicles and stuff lose their iconic look at fifteen mil they won't. At 15 mil, remember Spartan are uh, experts as well in CAD and, mm -hmm. and digital design. Yeah. They will be able to pull that off at 15 mil. No problem whatsoever. And you know, the, the great thing about the Warthog is there's no detail to lose, mm. really. Um, it, you know, it's, know, it's, it's, angular pa it's angular panels and things like that. <coughs> it got more and more gribbly as the, as the games went on. Yeah, but you know, most of that, I don't, I don't see anything in that picture. That, that couldn't come across really nicely mm, in 15, 15 mil. mil. You know, remember, look what uh, look what the guys at Hawk are able to do at 10 mil. Mm. You know, <coughs> it, it's absolutely astounding what the what these people are capable of. See, the question is, what it. style of game are they wanting to go for for this? Because at the minute, it's all speculation on yeah. when they hit the land battles, what are they going to do with it? Are they going to go mass battle? Are they going to want that overarching tactical view? Or do they want something down in tight, gritty, where you really feel you're playing the story? Are they likely to go 15 mil though? Because you look at Dystopian Wars, for example, that's a lot smaller than 15. Yeah, it's like 12. One, 100 it's or something? One, 1 to 1,200. Uh, something like that. So it is, it's, uh, I believe. You know, it's, yeah, um, but do, do they need to go that I, I don't small? Never I go think that if, they, if they went that, that small, they'd lose the, the iconic look of Halo. But there's no infantry gone. at that scale. There'd be no warthogs at that scale. Mm. You know, you could only do, you know, that scale is, is almost what they're doing um, in the space battle. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like this... at that scale, suddenly your infantry and your small vehicles become a theoretical thing, an abstraction, yeah. instead of an actual piece of I only, I only see two options uh, from my personal mm. perspective. Uh, I see them trying to do it at, at 28 mil, in mm. which case the biggest thing you're likely to see is Warthog, maybe, maybe one of the battle tanks. Well, I've got, I've got one here. Yeah, UNC, no, yeah I, I was about seeing that at 28 mil. Mm. But that's big beastie. For it example, is. troops sit on the side of them wheels. Yeah. I mean, one little guy is like, you know, all right, that sort of size. All right, so a, a guy is about yay tall whenever yeah, he's standing I, I, This is what mm. I'm saying. You know, I, I, if, I think that a warthog may well be as big as you get, actually, if he goes 28 mil. Otherwise, Maybe. everything becomes so unmanageable. However, if they go 15 mil, mm. you, it's still a Suddenly really good you're size. Up all those big vehicles. But it's a really good size for the troopers. Mm. Because remember, the Spartans, 
They don't run around in squads. They kind of run around in squads, you know. Well, but... well the troops do. Mm. Yeah. You know, not the not. Well, you kind of do and you kind of don't. When you're playing as Master Chief, you're just on your own. Being yeah, yeah but that, that's it, trying to tell you a story. But there are other Spartans who, who are... Are they squad-based? In, in teams, yeah. basically. Mm. Well, there is a squad of play... them in Forward Onto Dawn. I, I honestly think that if they go down this route, if they want to try and recreate any of the kind of mass battle feel to it, 15 mil would be the way to go. It would be my choice. Anyway. Yeah, well, the more you say, the more it makes sense. Because mm. if you have vehicles that would suddenly be like that big on the table at 28 mil, yeah. shrinking it down to the 15 mil scale, all those vehicles become unlocked. All those epic yeah. things that you'll remember from the games will be you unlocked. You could go down as far as 10 mil um, might work. Um, there's, there's walkers and stuff. I don't have the picture here. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have made it onto the iPad, unfortunately. But in, mm. in Halo, there is an actual walker you can climb into. Mm. Yeah. But the thing is, it's... Compared to the guy, let's say the guy's this uh, height here, uh, mm -hmm. the walker's like that height. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like three times the height of him, and he sits in the top cabin. Aye. Well, uh, we'll see. that's your well, lot on Halo. I mean, okay, yes, all right. No, I have it's not more your really lot cool stuff to show. Right, well, show us the, the Hornets. So we've got the flyers and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. That would be great yeah. for us all. Check, out, the check out the dropships. Oh. Yeah, those are nice. Right, well, what about the other side of it? You have some of the alien tech in here oh, as well, because you're going to want to see them too. Right, so here's one of the tanks you you you, right, yeah. <laughs> you meet these all the time. It's basically like an artillery tank. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, here's a class looking thing. Let's, I'll bring this up first. We've got the Scarab. Yeah, yeah those and are cool. Now to try I, and I give would you want one of them to paint up. A sense of scale of that thing. Now again, you'd need to be a pretty small scale if you want to pull this off. Yeah. Mm. Because... um. Just look, just look at the size of it compared to the dropships. Holy moly. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing, it, what, is that an end boss or something in the actual game? Or yeah, what? you run around fighting them, basically. You jump inside them and so kill through. So something okay. like that on the tabletop. You know, recently you guys did an unboxing of the mm. that spider mech from yeah, Warzone. Yeah, the Black Widow. The Black Widow. Mm. It, it, you're kind of looking at that kind of Black Widow type size. Yeah, but seeing that say. on a 15 mil table would look really, really epic. It'd be awesome, wouldn't well, you it? Get, yeah, you get uh, these in Halo Wars, for example. Yeah. Along with these. Mm. Oh, oh the Locust looks really cool, doesn't it? I have no idea where this image came from, but I just went, that's a cool looking Locust. I'm bringing that, that in. That's quite cute. Cute? Yeah, I, th I think that's cute. I mean, there's loads of places to go with this. Yeah. Because some might think, oh, there's not enough men and stuff, but there's loads of different troop types mm -hmm. in Halo. Oh, and if we just briefly jump back to the spaceships, we, we kind of got off before, yeah. mm -hmm. before I touched on the point that the Covenant have a breakaway internally, mm. so you can fight each other with They're your the Covenants. Sanghelios. Yes. Yes. Uh, Swords of Sanghelios, they're a breakaway faction for the Covenant. Uh, they're le led by Sangheli. Um, and it was officially founded after they found the tr or they learned the truth about the Halo installations near the end of battle installation on the fifth of November twenty five fifty two. So the Covenant, right, is a collection of alien races, yeah. a bit like Tau in forty k. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's been a smart, smart aliens have gone around and, and brought them in. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, we're, we're friends. Let, let's work together here. And they're referred to as the Prophets. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the Prophets are saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be saved by the Halo rings and this and that yep. and other. And then these guys to find out the Hill Rings are actually just going to wipe us all out. All oh, right. Mm. So they become a breakaway faction. Yeah. And the yeah. So they're separatists, people. and they yeah. no longer look to the prophets. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. So you'll have your Covenant fleet, and mm. you probably have separatist fleets, and your human fleet, and your human fleet, and you can probably have a disagreement in your human fleet as well. Well, of there's course. no reason I can't see why you couldn't have sub fleets of the human fleet. You know the way we have uh, different factions of Space Marines. Yeah. You know, you, you could have different factions of Spartans and yeah, fleets and, you might and have things like that. Yeah, of humanity that would have actually fell to the, the Covenant's influence or whatever. There may be some flood ships in it too. Oh, flood? Because the flood. Flood are like the zombies, man. Yeah, it's a parasitic yeah. race. Oh. Mm. It's basically taken over the universe, hence that's why the Halo, Halo Rings were yeah. built in the first place, because they basically wipe out all sentient life. I mm. see. When they're fired I for see. like astronomical distances. Mm. But the flood can take over spaceships. Right. So I guess we might see. I don't know if they'd fight in an organized Flat, fleet fashion. Flood infected ships. Yeah, you could maybe do because yep. then you could have Covenant ships and the human ships fighting in the same fleet. They're and, just taken over by. And them. then there's another faction called the Forerunners. Yeah. Who were before, basically way back in time. Who right? So, so there isn't just two factions. There's tons and tons of sub factions. There's a tons lot and of tons options. Of well, let me let me bring yet. up the Forerunners. These are the Prometheans. Oh, yeah. those are very cool. This is their troops. You see these in Halo Four. Mm -hmm. I like those. All right. So they're all their bits and pieces sort of float 
sort of gravitate toward each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think they'd make a really cool fleet. You don't really see the ships so much as there's one big orb thing, but if, if they're going to write extra stuff in. Yeah, yeah if, if Spartan has the ability to add cannon, yeah. why not add ships for these guys? Oh, You've absolutely. got a new race. You know, Parmesians yeah. are, are a prime target. Mm -hmm. oh, well, cool. uh, we're going to take a very quick break. Um, after the break, we're going to be talking about uh, the Drop Zone Commander event that just happened at the weekend, and the kickoff of our Salute 2015 coverage. We're putting a call out for bloggers and volunteers. Uh, some of you guys volunteered in the past. This is your chance to volunteer again. If you volunteer again and you'd volunteered in the past, you, I will be. Uh, I will guarantee you a spot. Um, I'm also kicking off another game designer challenge. So we'll be right back after this break. So last weekend, we had Ben uh, going down to cover Invasion 2015 mm -hmm. for us, and we launched our new live blogging platform, which worked pretty well. Yeah, it looked pretty good on the site. We had some, we had some issues. Mostly it was due, due to the fact of um, connectivity, um, the quality of the, the little uh, camera on the iPhone 4. Mm -hmm. It's not great, you know. Um, but other than that, when Ben uh, Ben had to leave and he was supposed to upload more stuff uh, on the train on mm -hmm. the way back, unfortunately, the train hit somebody. Ooh. What? Whoa, what? Yeah, uh, uh, the train hit somebody and poor Ben ended up stranded. Oh. Um, so uh, it wasn't until he got home at like one in the morning oh. that it, we started to get the rest of it updated. So it was um, all I didn't in all, know that because I was mm. looking at that and I seen the coverage stop and I thought, oh, it just stopped. It'd be nice to have we outro, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the outro all appeared. Now I know why there was yeah, a delay. Well, it was uh, we were in touch with Ben throughout the day, you know, giving him feedback and saying try this and try that. Mm -hmm. As we started to see the blog come, uh, the, the the live blog come to life and everything. Else. So I'm mm -hmm. very very pleased with how the actual system worked, mm -hmm. you know. And it's something that as we get used to it, I, I think it, it's going to be a fantastic method of. Being there without being there, you know, well, for as a close first, as you can for get a first to. outing, it, it it was great, it was and it, and it's mm -hmm. really going to spring to life when we have more than one yes blogger, mm -hmm. which I'll be coming to very shortly. But anyway, he was at the 2015 uh, invasion event. Um, some of the highlights were there was a tournament there, 42 competitors. Yep, at the we tournament. have some images of the guys um, playing away. Uh, this is going from strength to strength. Um, There's a lot more players probably thus, because when we, oh that's cool, but anyway, because when we were there, there was actually space between the tables. This mm -hmm. time I notice all the tables are uh, much quite tighter tight. together yeah, quite to get a lot more players in. One of the highlights for me is Patrice was there doing live art mm. on the day. Oh, wow. um, so he was actually doing it and Dave signed it off uh, towards the end of the day and said, yep, that's now canon, it, it had been entered into. Um, into the drop zone nice. commander world. Um, Which is kind of impressive, being able to, to concentrate and come up with something really cool. Everyone's running around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ben has interviews with Patrice. He also has a whole series of little interviews with Dave, mm -hmm. where Dave's taking him through some of the plans and, and some of the future. Uh, yeah, he was showing us some of the, the new minis that are coming out. There's a, there's <sighs> a few new big ones. Coming well, out uh, some of the ones I want to show you um, is, and I'm still getting up to speed with some of these, but each faction has a new special character model. Mm -hmm. These are legendary generals, okay, mm -hmm. and they come in their own vehicles. Um, and there's one for each faction. Now, they're kind of designed to be used in um, Fun games. scenario play, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're not particularly for tournament play. I don't know if they'll end up in tournaments, but they are for kind of scenario play. I believe we have some of them, uh, yeah, Justin, yeah, if you want to bring them up. Oh, so. they're, they're class looking. There's a brilliant one of the Scourge to start off with. Yep. So, so this is like a modified version of one of their big, nasty command ships. Yeah, absolutely. So each of them has a named character. Unfortunately, I don't have the named characters in front of me, and I'm not going to have a stab at it because I will get it wrong. But there's your, there's your Scourge one. Yep. Um, there's This one's for the Resistance. Yep, the oh, resistance. Ho, ho, look at that! Now, the Resistance actually got two. Yes. So you have your, 
your fighterius, your general mm -hmm. of the skies. Uh, wait a minute before you go. I love the colors that Dave's gone with. This. Yeah, well, Dave is Dave is really trying to give these particular models that sense of character because drop zone commander. There's no point in doing a little ten mil guy. You know? Yeah, it's um, it, this is where you get the character in you on know, that they've they've put their own personal touch. Yeah, I, 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 I'm so good. I've had this aircraft for so long. I've been yeah. able to paint it up and do it up my way. If and you he, think that's cool, though, what do you but, see there? But, but he's got like the jet engines, for example, move. Yes. Um, there, there can be position and stuff. Which mm. like. Oh, yeah. And then our tank commander. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. You, know. you can see all the, the, the kind of almost like tribal markings on it. It just, yeah. it just is really cool. Yeah. Uh, the UCM yep. have a Ferris. Um, uh, which is uh, which is kind of funky, but you'll notice that, uh, that the back end of the Ferris mm -hmm. has been redesigned for that character. So it's yeah. um, it, it's then, it's really brutal. Yeah. Then we have my personal favorite. Oh, oh he's look got a at custom that. Hades. Yeah. The the Hades is devastating anyway. But yep, they've you know, completely changed the weapon system on the back yeah. end of this, which I I really want to see how that's going to play out. Uh, so for all, any of you guys that are coming to. Uh, the Drop Zone Commander boot camp that we're hosting here next month. Mm. If you pick PHR as your army, lucky gets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but that's very, very that's cool. That's not all. At the actual event itself, there were some incredibly painted armies there as well, Ben was saying. Yes, yes. I've got a couple of images that I show off really quickly. Mm -hmm. Someone has done this. A Tron styled PHR army. That's kind of funky, isn't that it? Is, with the, with the glowing really blue cool. lines. You know, and all the red glows and stuff in them. I love yeah. it. I I'm, I haven't painted my own PHR just yet. I think this is my scheme. You reckon you go I, for a I, scheme I think like this that? is what I'm going to try. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, it, it is very, very cool. But we have, we have the Sheltari. Oh, well. yes, we forgot. The Sheltari, not to be left Oh, yes, out. yes, the Sheltari. This is the Sheltari commander ship as well. Mm -hmm. Again, Dave, look at the colors, man. That's class, the mm -hmm. way you've just been able to pop that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. I wouldn't have think to paint things those colors, but then yeah. I, I suppose if you've got the knack for it, mm -hmm. it just it just looks super. Now, yeah. some people were very lucky when they were at the event uh, because there was some chitter chatter about the spaceship, the upcoming spaceship yeah. game um, coming from uh, Hawk War Games. Um, uh, I'm not sure what uh, what has been said about this yet, but I do know that the game is very likely to be revealed. At Salute 2015. Guess where my first stop is at Salute. I think it'll probably be my first stop as well to go in and find out about so, that. So uh, it'll be us both live blogging <laughs> and fighting. No, I'm going to talk to him. No, I'm going to talk to him. It's, what, it's like six bloggers that just land all of them at once. Yeah, yeah. just six of the devices up around the chin. What's happening? Tell us. It's, um, it's a game that I'm especially looking forward to. Dave has a vision for this game that'll make it quite unlike any space battle game you've ever played before. Um, I think by this stage, maybe people do know that the that the game is being consulted on by Andy Chambers. Oh, I don't know if you know that or not, but you know now. So it's um, so it's uh, I, I am very very excited by mm -hmm. this. You know, and if you can imagine, you know, this game is uh, from what I can hear, a little bird tells me mm -hmm. is not deep space, but is more Earth. Uh, you know, planetary. So are, are we orbital? Mm -hmm. So you're fighting to get your troops on the ground. It could well be something like that. It, it's, oh. it's, there's some so stratosphere. There's, some, there's uh, there, a potential. I don't know. All this stuff is subject to change, um, but these are the kinds of little rumblings that I've been kind of mm -hmm. hearing uh, coming out on, on this. I'm yeah. very, very much looking forward right, to it. Right. So we now know that Dave hasn't went insane, and that that big ass ship that he is still trying to finish for salute. Is not what this game is for. You're not going to buy a kit and have to build that massive monster. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to build the big ship. No. That but would the, be fun, the interesting how thing many, is, how many Empire State builds do you think that is? Well, uh, the, the scale, the the scale of uh, Drop Zone Commander is enormous. Mm -hmm. That big ship that uh, is going to appear at Salute. Well, hopefully we have a picture of it in yep. its previous state. That's the smallest mm -hmm. ship of the the actual space battle game. Yep. That's like itty bitty, and it spits out. Hundreds of them drop ships yep. uh, the, come out of that, and it, it, you know, so it then scales up very rapidly. You mm -hmm. know, this is uh, drop zone commander is huge warfare. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, I like to call yeah. it proper warfare. You know, it's, it's, um, it's true scale warfare. It's all mm -hmm. out there. It's no skirmishing going on. It's just my massive army meets your massive army. Let's get yeah, it on. I want my world back. The, the the other thing about it is, you know, the reason I like to say it's true warfare is the rule mechanics mm -hmm. feel like 
modern combat. You know, it yes. has those aspects to it that make it. It doesn't feel. Um, it's not a grind game. Yeah, but it's not only that. It doesn't feel uh, contrived. Mm. It, it, it has elegance to it. Mm. You know, it feels like the, you know uh, that this is exactly how you would run mm. a battle if you were in this thing. You know, there's no rules in there for the sake of rules to mm. try and make it feel um, contrived. I'm using the same words yeah. again. There's an elegance about it. You know, I'm really looking forward to spending time with the, the folks that are coming over mm -hmm. for the boot camp yeah. you know, as we get to grips with this game because it, you, will, uh, you will love it. It, mm -hmm. is, it is that good. Anyway, talking of the 20, uh, 2015, this week we're kicking off um, a lot of our organization and coverage and stuff of Salute 2015. Yep. Um, I'm putting a call out now for um, uh, the final call for our bloggers. So here are our plans. We will be there on Force. We're going to be live blogging the event. So this year, rather than you having to wait for coverage, um, we intend to actually cover the event as we are there. Mm. Okay. Um, we're going to roll out the live blogging system for it. And I believe we're going to have six bloggers, okay? Um, uh, myself, uh, our crew are going to be there. G uh, Gianna and Dawn are going to be there. So we'll be live blogging in and around the thing. But this is your opportunity to come along and be part of the Beast of War team on the day. The way we're going to do our coverage this year is we're going to split it up into themes. Mm. So you, whenever you uh, submit the form that's uh, below on the website here, you will pick the theme that you want to volunteer for. Mm. So will you live blog sci-fi at Salute? Mm. Will you live blog fantasy at Salute? Will yep. you live blog punk, punk horror and weird at Salute? That's the one I want. Will you live blog the gaming tables at Salute? Mm. Um, you know, uh, well, these... You can do the cosplay stuff at Salute. We don't you know, normally so, cover it because yeah. we're too busy doing everything else. Mm. So with having our, our live bloggers out there, you will have the, the support of Ben, uh, myself, Lloyd, Justin. Uh, we, have, we have a press suite um, where yep. we, will, we will be um, uh, assisting you and whatnot. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing is, right, um, it would be easier if you had something like an iPad or an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4S up, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the system works beautifully with tablets and smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you have, uh, great. If not, tell us what you have, and we're going to set up a test environment where you'll be able to practice and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be able to try it out with your system. We've designed it to basically be that you can just run around, take some shots, and then just upload it directly uh, from uh, from your device. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling, you can then come back to the press suite mm -hmm. where we will hopefully have even better connectivity and we'll connect it into laptops and stuff like that and upload mm -hmm. it. All the while, Ben mm -hmm. will have full editorial view over it and we'll be catching any spelling errors and uh, issues and things like that and fixing things and upgrading things. So th the end result of this will be that during uh, Salute, we'll probably kick off the day before and do a little live blog of our setup and then on the day, we'll be doing the live blogging all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can't make it to Salute, if you're over in the States or uh, elsewhere, you're going to get the experience of Salute. And the great thing about the live blog is that you can click on any of the bloggers' names and filter just to see their stuff. So if you're just interested in the sci-fi at Salute, mm -hmm. you'll be able to click on that blogger's name and a bang, it'll filter down and you will only see the, mm -hmm. the sci-fi at Salute. We're not finished. As well as having the press zone where we're going to be, mm -hmm. uh, this year we're going to do a game. We're not taking the Hobby Lab this year. Uh, we're going to do something different instead. We were so inspired by the work that clubs and things had been doing uh, last year and uh, uh, the previous years to but create the, participation games. But it was an eye-opener because we'd been there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But last year we really focused in on the gaming tables and it was just like, this is so much fun what they're doing here. We have to yeah. get in on this. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a tribute to all the hard work that the clubs and stuff have been doing, we're going to have a go at it ourselves. So we're going to do the Battle of Hoth. Right, so that's what that's for. <laughs> yes, he's wondering what this is for. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a big-ass table, mm -hmm. okay? 
And on that big ass table, we're going to have uh, Star Wars miniatures. Yep. Like these little guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you pass me that bad boy there. Oh, they are? We're, yeah, we're going to have oh. some of these marching along the table. Tick -um, tick -um, tick -um, tick -um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the whole thing will be ice themed. Uh, we're going to have snow speeders uh, that can attack uh, the the atats, and then over at the far end, we'll have the rebel base where I have been working. I'm not finished yet on this bad boy here. Look at that! I saw you come in this morning with that giggling and smiling, going, Tee -hee -hee -hee, "Look what I've got! Look what I've got!" So I I've, thought this was something you wanted to play with Savannah. Well, yeah. this morning, turn it to the other side. Well, this morning it, it looked, looked like, like that. that, and then he got you and, jo you and John. No, he got John to do this. To go out this and smoke all and blow all over. Oh, yeah, to blow all the smoke over. <laughs> well, I've started to weather it. It's still, it's still a fair bit of work to do to this, but that is uh, my Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. so far. Uh, the scale of it is just perfect. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. You know, so um, there'll be one of these, there'll be an X-Wing taking off. So this will probably be taking off like that. There'll be an yeah. X-Wing taking off and one of the big uh, Rebel transports kind oh, of taking of off cigars. as well. So what's the crack with all of this? Well, I'm doing a game designer challenge. Um, if you would like, to be an honorary member of the Beasts of War that day, mm. you get the opportunity to write the game. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I have some ideas uh, for the game, but I'm willing to put them all aside. And we're going to put it out. Uh, oh. We did a game designer challenge at Halloween Past where uh, Kedrick Winks and... Uh, oh, I forgot the name of the artist. I had, it, I had meant to write it down. My apologies. There was two people <laughs> uh, got together mm -hmm. and made uh, localized an awesome zombie game. We're doing it again, slightly different uh, thing this time. You uh, will have the chance to write a participation game mm -hmm. for the Battle of Hoth. The key here is a participation game. Mm. So you have to create a game that's very, very easy for members of the public to come up and get involved in. Yep. Now that could be like public votes, it could be uh, shouting and roaring, it could be all kinds of things, okay? Mm -hmm. One thing that I had been thinking about that I thought was kind of cool was using almost like a little dread ball mechanic um, for the, the snow speeders, uh -huh. that the snow speeders have to get a loop around an at, -at okay? Mm -hmm. And the first quadrant, uh, you need four pluses on four dice, mm -hmm. the second quadrant, you need four pluses on three dice, the third quadrant, you need four pluses so on three on dice. So depending on how far you want to go determines what you're yeah. going to roll. You can always stop your turn and try and come back to it, but it sits there in the open. Yeah. Or you can take the risk and keep going, but it Yeah, could... so it's that risk-reward system that's yeah, so beautiful. It could yeah, could crash and Those fail. Good. Do you know what we really need? We need one of them ice monsters that was in the cave. We have a Wampa. Have we we got have one? a Wampa coming in. Um, Just have it running around. Uh, this is the point where I say uh, a huge thank you, because there's been... Uh, some <coughs> members behind, yes, Gav, Gav Roachdown. So Kedrick Winks and Gav Roachdown. Sorry about that, Gav. Um, there has been uh, some members, like Owen from Huddersfield Ga uh, Games, very kindly <coughs> donated <coughs> some uh, Star Wars miniatures to us, mm -hmm. okay? And um, we had another member on the, the site recently who uh, is sending us some Star Wars miniatures nice. from Canada. Um, if you happen to have <coughs> the Battle of Hoth, um, Star Wars miniatures that you don't want anymore. Um, I don't mean to, to beg um, <laughs> and to be really scabby and like that, but if you happen to have some Star Wars miniatures, especially the Battle of Hoth miniatures, mm -hmm. um, like snow speeders or the gun towers mm -hmm. or the, the individual little uh, rebels and so basically, stormtroopers. Send them to a good home and know that at Salute this year, there's going to be an epic gameplay. Yeah, like not that. only at Salute, we're hoping to take this on tour with us to oh. some other events. Okay. Um, so um, this this is going to kind of be the Beast of War uh, event crack type uh, thing. Okay. So anyway, so it's a participation game. Uh, what will happen? You will, will you, you will submit to us. Um, your idea for the participation game. We don't expect it to be fully fleshed out, um, but we do expect you to think in terms of what would be simple enough for people to just walk up and get involved in it. Mm -hmm. You might want to split. There might be two or three different games, like mm -hmm. the mini game for the snow speeders, 
a mini game in the middle of the board that where cool. there's um, uh, walkers and stuff going up and yeah. in infantry fighting, and then maybe a mini game where the rebel fortress has been breached. And stormtroopers are trying to get uh, to the point where to overload the ion cannon and blow it up. Mm. These are just ideas. Think about how you would do it. Fill in the, the form below. So there's two forms below um, with your ideas. We will, we will go through them. We will pick a winner. Um, only fill it in if you can be available to come to salute. I have to say that um, because you are going to be the master of ceremonies at your own game. Mm. So you will be a, uh, a our guest at Salute, where you will be there taking people through the game and having some fun and stuff mm. like that with them. So if you can't be at Salute, please don't apply, because we want you to be there uh, with your game. Um, we are hoping uh, that we might be able to get you uh, some uh, game design support from uh, a well-known uh, game designer, somebody I'm very fond of. Mm -hmm. um, but we will wait to hear on that. But in the, at the very least, you will definitely have uh, the support of ourselves uh, to make your game awesome and yeah. to make here, people here enjoy go, it on the day. Put them glasses on. Again? We now have Rick Priestley. <laughs> Everybody, uh, welcome, Rick. What do you think of doing Hoth action? I think it could be quite fun. I'm looking forward to it on the day. Salute. Thanks, that's, everybody. That, Goodbye. That's fantastic. So there we have it. Um, call for bloggers if you want to be a blogger. Um, with Beast of War on the day, uh, submit your application in the form below. If you want to be uh, our game designer and to do the Battle of Hoth participation game for Beasts of War, submit in the other form below. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Um, we'll be right back after this. So this week we were surprised, caught off guard actually, mm -hmm. uh, because Ghostbusters has become a board game, and it came to Kickstarter. Yeah, it was just completely out of the blue. It had a fairly high target at the time of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I don't know. With that franchise, they could have aimed at that. Not a problem. Pecker's been down in the <coughs> down in the basement and flicked the switch and boof. Yeah, yeah. Out of burst. It, it, they've reached it. They're now bursting their way through uh, stretch goals. Let yeah. me give you some notes on well, it. Well, well, that's yeah. Just just on the stretch goals thing. Yeah. I was reading some comments and people were saying, "Oh, it's the wrong time to come out with Conan and stuff mm. like this." And I thought, no, not, no, with, Ghostbusters. not with Ghostbusters. That yeah, franchise it's... is just too big not to not to hit its goal. Yeah, yeah. It's... and it's just rocketed up into the hundreds of thousands in no time. Yeah. Um, there we have. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? Yeah. So it's a new game by uh, Cryptozoic. Um, Cryptozoic, uh, their pedigree in games is not bad, actually. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. You know, it's a, uh, um, it's not fancy flight. You know, but let's get let's do the box. Okay, start. box for a start. Okay, so the the it's a cooperative game. Mm -hmm where each buster has different skills to bring to the table. It's got three campaigns featuring four episodes or yep. adventures, um, and they're played out in about 30-minute bursts. Yeah. Uh, Double-sided tiles. I don't know if you have any pictures of the tiles. I don't think um, I have any the, of the tiles. The tiles are double-sided, and the higher there's a higher pledge level that gets you a 10-centimeter Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Um, the initial, is uh, that the angry one? Yeah, that's the, the one that has been burnt. So we don't have a picture of him. Uh, we might do. do. We? I think this might get us. There he is. Just see him here. Yeah, the impossible mode, supersized, angry, Arr! stay puffed marshmallow. Yeah, you also get the limited edition box, which is yes. its, its own version. Well, there's some tiles there. Yeah, and yeah. there's some tiles. Although, I like the way they've done this Kickstarter because mm -hmm. you have three pledge options. Yeah. You have the game. Yes. Everything. Yes. Retailer. Very simple. Very simple. Very clean. I have three options. Am I want this game? Yes. Do I want everything? No. Okay. I know my pledge. Yeah. Do I want everything? Yes. Okay. I know my pledge. Yeah. Am I a retailer and am I hoping to get people to come in and play it in my store? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm covered. Yeah. There, there is a simplicity to it, which I, I think helps 
a, a, a game like this, which mm. is based on um, such a a mainstream piece of IP. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what other pictures do we do we have uh, on it there? Because we, ha- we, we have some do we have any of the ghoulies, the ghosts and stuff? Yes, we do. We have this. So it, here's some of the the stuff that you're going to get in it. Now the the actual the actual contents of the box it seems to have come from both the movies, the cartoons, and the, comics. the comics, and the toy lines. Mm-hmm. So it, it's very interesting. It, you know, there's nothing like oh, you could only use the movie. Um, well, or you I, can only use the cartoon. I didn't realize that the IP of it was all centralized. Yeah, well, when I seen the, the box, I thought, I thought first thing I thought was that's the real Ghostbusters, the cartoon, mm. until I looked at it closer and I oh, it's not. Mm-hmm. But I hadn't realized that there was a really cool looking comic out. Yeah. And well, that's, the, that's the style. This is based on the, the comic style. But the mm. other aspect to this is I don't see a Sony Pictures logo on this anywhere. No. No, it's. But um, they are working with Sony. It's um, Columbia. That's Sony. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, but, no, that is Sony. I've been reading up on the Kickstarter. They are working together with Sony on this. It mm-hmm. is completely licensed out. Everything yeah. is above board. Mm-hmm. This is not something that you're going to see get IP hammered in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, here, here's the art style. Now, I've yes. seen some grumblings online of mm-hmm. people who don't like the look of it. But I actually think it's really cool. Yeah. Well, what, like were you gonna, what, what were you going to do realistically? The, you know, the only way really is you're either going to put photographs in it, mm-hmm. which I think is a little bit cheesy, Mm-hmm. Um, or you go with a with a, an art style, and I I kind of like that. It it, it has mm-hmm. that. It almost has a little anime kind of feel to it. Yeah, uh, a little, a little bit. bit. So, um, I, I think it works really well. And I think that the miniatures, they may not be everybody's cup of tea. These miniatures. Yeah, I, I think it's see... the miniatures, people. Yeah. It's not the fact that it's the artwork. It's the fact that the miniatures look like the artwork that I yeah. think is throwing some people. They don't want that. But I think it's actually really cool. I'm waiting to see. I'd like to see photographs of how the miniatures actually turn out, okay? Mm, this is because I would really like uh, Cryptozoic to s- expend some effort on the miniatures to make mm. the miniatures fantastic. The highlight, yeah. yeah. Ghostbusters deserves nice minis. Yeah, yeah, it does. I have a great set of uh, Ghostbusting minis that I got from uh, uh, 7 TV. <laughs> um, but I really want these to be a highlight, these miniatures. And, and I, yeah. um, uh, the style of them, I could get used to the style of them so long as they're high quality. So I'm waiting to see a prototype just to see how good a quality they are. Yeah. If they just stick them in as rubbery, soft looking game pieces, mm. I will be gutted. Mm. And it will be such an opportunity missed uh, if they don't spend some time getting these. I like right. it. I think Slimer looks great holding his bottle and his chicken leg and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah. These things here just just The scream, galloping ghouls. Just yeah. scream the cartoon mm. at me. And I loved the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, I absolutely loved the cartoon. I loved the fact that yeah. Slimer was called Spud. Yeah. <laughs> um, you see, so you've got the the gruesome twosomes. They look great. The Boogaloo manifestations. I'm really hoping that we start to see some stretch goals well, on this. I've got some for you. Oh, there we go. There's our stretch goals. So Ecto One, we had to see it as a stretch goal. Yeah. Zool and Vince Clortho. Yeah. I I want to see. A whole raft of ghosts. I want to be able to to have a an entire collection mm. of ghosts and ghoulies and yeah. all sorts of. Well, weird these stuff, are so. the only three stretch goals we've seen so far. What I would like to see mm-hmm. is maybe some set on terrain pieces to add to your game board to start to put in taller buildings and stuff into it. But well, I'm sure that will be a really high stretch goal. Well, it sounds fun. It says here, dur- this is on their Kickstarter page. During each turn, players move, shoot. Proton streams, deposit trapped ghosts, and use unique character abilities, and drive Echo One to complete objectives. Yeah. So it's like watching a little a little episode mm-hmm. of, of like the cartoon or something. Yeah, that and you can get slimed. Yes, and we could totally play this on one of our eight by four city boards. Oh yeah. How cool would that oh, be? Oh yeah. That, yeah. that would be cool. And the, other, <laughs> and the other thing is here it says um. It's a fast-paced game. Each scenario takes approximately thirty intense minutes to play. What do you mean by what do you, game. what do you mean by thirty intense minutes? Is it, that more like sixty minutes? Yeah. What it means is it's thirty minutes if you know the game, and it's sixty minutes to two hours if you don't know the game. You know? I, I don't so, know. If we got it down to that thirty minute, that's our lunchtime game, and right there that you guys have always been talking about. Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm delighted to see it. Mm-hmm. I really, really want them to get it right, though. I just yeah. Don't uh, mock us one up on me, guys. Yeah, I totally gra- gonna go grab the steak puff marshmallow man and stick him in a little drop some commander table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for uh, charge up the table. Ah, uh, 
Um, the, the scenario maps have been constructed using double-sided tiles. They have streets and park imagery. Yeah. Um, and it's been done by Rob Mamarts, I believe is the, the way we pronounce it. Um, there's a starter mode and a challenge mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it, it is looking it is looking very, very promising. It's one of those iconic pieces. If you love Ghostbusters at all, you cannot miss this. I adore Ghostbusters. I adore. I don't you know. I've never this. met anyone who doesn't adore mm. Ghostbusters. But get it right. Get get me a big selection of ghosts in there. Yep. Please, please, please concentrate on those miniatures. Get those miniatures to be a brilliant. Make them little collectible pieces in their own mm. right. Um, uh, and don't, 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 please give us um, garbage on, on that. If, so, if they're good and we can sit down and paint those miniatures. But is that not the risk here? Because Ghostbusters will practically sell itself. Yes. Yeah. That you don't need to put that amount of effort into yeah, the well, I mean, like I, I see you sitting here right now, Warren, and it's just you sitting there going, <laughs> right in the childhood. I guess, what yeah. we're, I guess what we're hoping for is it's a group of fellas and girls behind this who love the movie and the cartoons and mm -hmm. want to do a class job yeah. and have something that they're proud of and go, we did that and it looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think they will. I think anybody that picks up a license like this mm -hmm. will want to do the best job they can. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is, it's all very well setting out with those expectations. We know now that there are plants and manufacturing processes out there that can create incredible miniatures. Yeah. You know, we, we saw that with um, uh, when we had Jamie on the show with the Conan yeah. Uh, miniatures. He'd brought in some sample miniatures from the the manufacturing process that they're going to use with them mm -hmm. um, from Journey of oh I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's in a previous mm -hmm. uh, show. And the miniatures looked absolutely fabulous. We know, for example, that uh, Dust Studio uh, and their manufacturing process can mm -hmm. produce some it's, really it's really good Journey miniatures. Journey Wrath of Demons. Journey Wrath That's of Demons. It. That was the very one. So we know that it's possible, but we also know that you can get some serious chod. Um, where it, it mm. comes back and it's just rubbery, all bent out of shape, yeah. really soft looking, and you lose the details, and it, and it, you just you look at it and you just go, oh, I, I don't want to paint it at all. Yeah, or you, or you hand it to me and I stick it in dental and ruin it. Yeah, I, I want this. <laughs> um, I'm accepting my feet on that. I want this, you know, because I, yeah. I want to be able to paint it. I, I want mm. to have a fully painted, mm. big ass. Ghostbusters adventure game mm -hmm. because at Christmas we will I will get the family together. Why'd you pick Christmas? Is it obviously a Halloween game? Uh, well, yeah, Aye, hang on, too. it's an all yeah. year round game. Yes, yes, it is, but it's not that you can't get the family together all year round. So I'm just thinking of the times when we actually do get together. Okay, but you know, it, Christmas, Halloween, or something like that. Yeah. get everybody together, beautifully painted up miniatures. Mm. You know, set out the tiles, and let's go. Bust some ghosts. Mm -hmm. Then all that's left to ask is, who are you going to call? <laughs> Kickstarter? I want one. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. And so we come to the end of another weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, almost. Almost. I've got a cra cracking little topic. Mm. Um, Oriskany, um, uh, one, of, uh, one of our fantastic, fabulous contributors, mm. okay, has come out, is starting another article series on Monday. You're going to love this one. Do you do anything else with your life other than correct me and make articles? <laughs> yeah, but we're giving him shout outs uh, on unboxing uh, on historical or, stuff. Oriskany is. He's a trooper, he really he is. is yeah. he, 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 he's just. He's a god among beasts. You know, <laughs> it's, um, uh, anyway, his new article series uh, kicks off on Monday yep. and it's World War 2.5. Interesting. Now, I've been, I've been talking to him behind the scenes about mm -hmm. this. You know, he, he is, he's a true historical es expert on mm -hmm. the Second World War. We have. A number of them uh, within Beasts of War now, and uh, it's. I've just got to say, um, 
Well, I'm I'm like the happiest man in the world these days. Mm. You know, Beast of War has exploded over the last year. Mm -hmm. um, traffic is through the roof. The, the some of the contributors and uh, community members that we have are just fabulous. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can't name you all because you've just so many. But we have Red Ben. Who uh, do, uh, who does all the ancients and stuff like that? They're just what a fabulous guy. Yep. You know we have uh, Oriskany, um, the Tauros. You know, I, I, I'm sorry if I if I do you know what? Sometime I will get all the names and we'll just read them all out because so you all an deserve to be recognised. And then on top of that, I get to play with crap like this man. You know, <laughs> yeah, we'll it's get like, <sighs> you know, I walked in today. I did walk in today with this, yeah, and I was grinning from ear to yeah, we, ear. We saw it you was... walking in, going, "What's that? Have we been sent something new?" No, yeah, this, I ain't got this. This is this is not the toy one that uh, I always wanted as a child. This is just a model, so it doesn't yeah. have bits and pieces to open it up. Mm. But this is perfect for what we're trying to do at Salute. Mm. But imagine having a job where you get to play with <laughs> shit like this, man. It's just oh wow. You know, so I'm just. Today, of, of all days, I've been just walking around on a little bit of Cloud9. Mm. This really does it for me as well, because um, Ariskine is a, a huge histor historical e expert, a massive asset uh, to the Beast of War community. Mm -hmm. And um, he knows that I love my pulp and uh, my yep. what-if scenarios. Mm -hmm. And he contacted me and he said, look, I've got an idea. I want to do World War 2.5. I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Mm. What's that all about? So the premise, it's June 1946. And for whatever reason, because we're not going to get into the reasons of it too much, the Soviets and their Eastern European allies feel that they have no choice but to strike into West Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, the Americans, the British, and the French uh, armies of occupa or, 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 occupation mm -hmm. are trying to protect those, the, the German cities and contain that initial Soviet advance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He's got the scope. Now, the scope is, uh, we're not going to be making any presumptions about how the war started, okay, mm -hmm. or how likely such a war may or may not have been. We don't care about that, okay? The fact is, it's happened. This is, this, this is the situation we find ourselves in. He's also focus, uh, focusing strictly on operations and tactics in central West Germany. So we don't really care what the global strategic situation is. Um, it's up for discussion among members of the site. You know, we can brainstorm and uh, whatnot around that. But for World War 2.5, it's that central West German uh -huh. uh, Germany that we're, we're, we're razor focusing in on. It is a tactical gaming element, okay, where he's going to be using battle group. Now, yep. battle group is something that you will see um, some more of very shortly on Beast of War. Uh, Battle Group is a World War II rule set mm. by Plastic Soldier Company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful little book, and I've heard nothing but good things about the game. In fact, Battle Group Kursk was one of the finalists in the 2014 Gaming mm. Awards. Yep. Um, we have some of the stuff here. Like, this is Battle Group Overlord, mm -hmm. and it's just... Chock full. Chock full of, of stuff. Uh, we have the Fall of the Reich. We have Barbarossa. I've invited um, a, a couple of the, I think, the writers and stuff like that to come mm -hmm. on to Beast 4 to spend some time with us. Um, and we'll actually uh, do a little bit on Battle Group mm -hmm. because um, it works beautifully with the 20 millimeter. 172nd scale yep. uh, range from Plastic Soldier Myself Company. Myself and John have been unboxing these recently. They're very, very nice little yeah. Um, I uh, We have a lot of 15 mil stuff going on, mm -hmm. and we have 28 mil stuff going on. Uh, but I also were really, really excited to explore 20 mil on that mm -hmm. 172nd scale. Part of the reason for that is myself and Lloyd are model rail buffs. Uh. Um, <laughs> and that... 20 mil 170 second scale it's, really starts to, to come into the model mm -hmm. rail, yeah. and there's a ton of 170 second scale models and stuff out there yeah. that you can Huge do all sorts range of stuff, stuff. with. Yep. So um, stay tuned for that. We hope that you guys enjoy it and support um, uh, and support this look at the 20 millimeter scale stuff. Um, uh, because if you do enjoy it, 
we will certainly uh, do our bit to try and work with Plastic Soldier Company and the writers of this to bring you to bring you more and more content on it. So we mm -hmm. see how we go. So tactical gaming. This is the rules that he's using. Okay, um, uh, I'm not sure what scale he's going to do it in. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, but I don't think the scale matters too much. Um, he's going to be highlighting vehicles, equipment, and units that were just coming out mm -hmm. at the end of World War II um, and probably didn't get to see much or any combat. Yep. So he's going to be looking at some of the some of the the heavier. I would imagine. So we're going to see Panthers like with night fighting kits, Germans with again infrared setups on the rifles and things. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be an operational gaming level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I assume is that this? That's this kind of thing here. Right. Okay. okay. Um, uh, uh, Oriskany has uh, an incredible mind for having both operational and tactical level games. Mm -hmm. He did an article series about the different levels of gaming, yes. uh, which took us through operational, tactical and stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll get a, a link to that. Uh, you, it's well worth reading. It was fantastic. So he's, he's designing, printing and play testing his World War 2.5 divisional scale war game. Mm -hmm. And it's now basically complete. Um, it'll be featured in the article and used as a mechanic to show the bigger picture mm -hmm. of what's happening before he zooms in to uh, do the actual tactical so games. So I think this is one of his games here. Um, and th this is some of the, the tactical games that he's been doing. Mm -hmm. um, the tone, and the tone's obviously important in this. Uh, although it's obviously a flight of fiction, mm -hmm. yep. okay, um, he's going to keep the project as plausible and realistic as he can. So mm -hmm. he's deliberately choosing not to let the West Germans suddenly feed legions of monstrosities like the mouse or the rat or the E100 super heavies. Yep. So they're not going to suddenly out of the blue... I suddenly know, we're back on our feet. Yeah. We're ready to rock again. Yep. Um, he, he's also presenting a very compelling reason for the Americans not to use the A-bomb. Mm. Yeah. Because remember, the, the, by this stage in 1946, yep. Uh, the A bomb uh, was the, available as well, so there is a, there's a very compelling reason for him not to do that. So this is there will be a sense of realism to this whole campaign. Um, he's trying to keep the army significantly smaller than 1945 levels mm -hmm. to account for those post war drawdowns mm -hmm. that, that we, you would have seen, and to try and keep the game a, a bit more manageable. So the article series spread over four parts mm -hmm. and uh, there's going to be a big map uh, for the world war 2.5 downloadable game because in the final part we're going to have a set of pdfs that you can download as a backstager mm -hmm. uh, take with you and run the whole thing yourself so it'll cool. all be packaged up for you um i'm just utterly enamored with this the idea very cool now, now that you mentioned it, because you were talking to me about this earlier, saying, you know, legions of mouse and stuff, and I was like, well, there was mouse around, but... No, 1946 is a really interesting period as well, because you got, like you said, stuff that didn't get into combat. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the British had brought out Centurion in 1945, yep. which was so good it lasted 50 years in British yeah. service. Mm -hmm. um, the Americans had Pershing... Uh, they had the Easy 8, mm -hmm. and they were coming out with uh, later designs, like the, uh, the M46 patterns and stuff like that. So, yeah. so suddenly that equipment. stuff that you were seeing in Vietnam would have been just about yeah. ready to rock and roll into World War. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, the equipment scale is massive. The Russians even have the JS-3 yeah. in 1945. So What's in, the JS-3? The JS-3 is the big kahuna of the, the Russian uh, military arm. It was, yeah. a, it was a heavy tank, but... Uh, the design was out of this world. It was really sloped. It had a big pike nose in the front, so mm -hmm. it had really big angles and a big gun on it. And um, it scared the Americans and the British when they first seen it in mm -hmm. 1945. They were terrified of it. Is this the thing where they were standing watching a Russian parade? A victory parade, yep. yep. And these things drove past. And was it Patton that turned around and said I something? I think or it was Patton. Erskine will know better, probably. Um, but it, apparently an American general leaned over to a British general whose the colour had drained from his face saying these things and he went, don't worry, we're still on your side. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it'll be a fascinating what-if scenario. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's got a, a new game that we haven't had the chance to have a look at. Yep. Yep. Um, it's got all the aspects that, that, that'll make for a very interesting article series with the different operational levels and tactical mm -hmm. levels. 
Now I can't wait. So guys, uh, let us know what you think about that and uh, make sure and hop on over on Monday when the first part of that is out. Mm -hmm. um, gents, I think we shall call it at that. Yeah. Uh, folks, look, thank you very much. Why not hop on over to beastofwar.com and sign up for one of our uh, backstage accounts. Uh, backstage is what allows us to keep going. Um, it, it's a, a group of Beasts of War fanatics um, that pay a small fee uh, to access a ton of extra content. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that content is growing all the time. We have hundreds and hundreds of hours of content uh, there for uh, split across Hobby Lab videos where we're showing you how to build uh, mm -hmm. terrain pieces. We have uh, painting tutorials, and we also have an extra version of this show, which is a, a, another hour long of this show where we're talking about other things that are happening in the industry and stuff like that. It's called the Weekender XLBS. Beast of War relies on our backstagers uh, for two things. One, to keep the lights burning and uh, to keep the whole place going, keep our rent and stuff going, but also to maintain our independence within the industry. Um, that backstage group is what gives us a backbone um, to be able to uh, stand up to the winds of the industry and uh, report on what we see happening and, uh, and to feed back to you guys. And so they, they also provide excellent feedback as well. Mm -hmm. Backstagers provide excellent feedback. We also have um, other perks for backstagers. For example, um, in May 22nd, we're going to be running a, a bolt action boot camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we've uh, sold out of the Drop Zone Commander Bootcamp, which is going next month. Uh, but in May, we're going to do a Bolt Action Bootcamp, where you can come and spend a weekend with Beasts of War and the creators of Bolt Action. Um, you get uh, in the ticket price, it includes accommodation, it includes food, it includes a starter army. Everything's in there for you to come and have a wonderful gaming experience um, here uh, with us uh, at Beasts of War. And that, uh, the perk on that is backstagers get first refusal. Yep. And the Drop Zone Commander event, well, well, fortunately for us, but unfortunately for everyone else, sold out within backstage. Yep. Mm. So um, we never got the chance to offer it out to you guys. I don't know if we're going to get the chance to offer out this bolt action one to you guys either. Um, so if you do fancy getting on to that, please do come across, sign up to backstage uh, to get your to get a chance to uh, book your ticket and your place for that event. Look, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to John, Justin, Lloyd. Uh, all that's left to be said is have a fantastic week of gaming.